These aggressive killer bees have attacked and killed over a thousand people in Latin America. Since their arrival in the United States, they have already killed two dozen people. These bees will live in anything. I mean, literally. Reed Booth works as a professional killer bee removal expert in Arizona. It takes only a few seconds for thousands of angry, ferocious bees to launch an offensive attack. This many bees and how insane they are would have killed us. I'm an adrenaline junkie. He's always taken risks. Um, you just can't change someone's personality. Oh, damn it. Reed's bee suit can't always protect him from getting stung. All right, you little bastard, you're done for. Let's get him. Reed often works under dangerous conditions. He risks his life on every job to keep us safe. As the sun rises in Arizona, it's the start of another busy day for Reed Booth. With his assistant, Jim, aboard, he heads off to go remove killer bees that are disrupting people's lives. Reed lives on the outskirts of Bisbee, a town nestled within the Arizona Mule Mountains, a mere 15 miles from the Mexican border. This town used to be a busy copper mining town. But when the facilities closed down their operations 30 years ago, Bisbee became a haven for artists and retirees. Today, the entire state of Arizona is saturated with killer bees. In the state of Arizona alone, they estimate there are between four and five million wild Africanized hive, with each hive containing an average of 40 to 60,000 bees. So I can do the math. Reed's first job today is in the neighboring town of Sierra Vista. I can tell this is a big one. Reed old. and his assistant, Jim, put on their protective bee suits to avoid being stung. My husband works around out in the barn and out there, and he's noticed a bunch of bees flying around. Yeah. And then when he showed me the other day where they were, you can hear them underneath. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, you can hear. So. All right, we'll just meet you over there. Okay. All right, great. Can't hear them right now. Can't hear them, but I'll tell you what, day before yesterday, you was, mm, could hear, oh yeah, you could really hear them buzzing. Well, I can see a couple of them buzzing around, so they've got to be under here somewhere. Oh? Whoa, there they are. I'm not getting any closer. Oh, well, my bee suit on. You can, uh, if you want to watch, pull a car I up and sit in a no, car. I'll be far You'll away. be fine. <laughs> Don't worry. You're smarter than, way over there. smarter than I am, my dear. Yeah. Uh, so I'll go ahead and tie into it, and we'll take care of it, and then I'll come and knock on the door when we get it wrapped. OK. Reed never knows how aggressive a hive is going to be until he actually starts to remove it. Crazy bunch of bees. OK, beady bees. Well, let's be sure to keep an eye out for snakes and centipedes and black widows and all the other friendlies, okay. as opposed to the bees. First, they have to remove these construction supplies to find the beehive. Oh, they're getting off the chain a little bit here. If you see any bees over there, if you see any bees over there, you dad alert, they're getting mean. Oh, Lord. Here they are. They're attacking. Oh, man, I can smell that venom. The strong smell of venom reminds Jim to make sure his suit is well zipped up. Oh, she's still standing over there. I don't think she should. <laughs> While lifting these sharp objects, they have to be extra careful not to rip their suits, or the killer bees could get in. Wow, they are off the chain. They are really unhappy with us at this point. And of course, I can't scratch my nose. God dang it all. Oh, they're nuclear, dude. They're not coming in, so. No, no, you're good. Can you see, I, I mean, I can see on your mask how they're like, I know, I can, trying to sting. I can smell that venom. Yeah, I can smell the venom big time. I mean, actually, do this. Since Jim is new on the job, Reed explains to him how your breath we're attracts gonna, gonna, the bees to your face. Here. Oh, these guys are off the chain. Yeah, look at that. Help me. What they do is they go for the CO2 coming out of your nose and mouth, Jim. Okay. The whole um, thing about that is it's combined with why they go for dark colors. 
is because their natural enemies are bears, right? And, and uh, bears are dark. And then over the eons, they've learned that the most sensitive part on a bear, nose and mouth. CO2 comes out of the nose and mouth on an old mammal. In fact, I've done an experiment where I'll have a tube going down my suit mm -hmm. to my boot from my mouth with a screen on the end, and they attack my boot because of the CO2, and then it keep, kind of keeps them off the face, but it's also cumbersome, so the heck with it, but... Uh, wow. Um, Amazingly enough, they're still looking for the hive. Well, they're not under there. Uh, maybe they're in one of these. I don't know where the heck they are. Oh, boy. Wow. They are crazy. Oh, I think they're in here. Oh, you could be right. That's why this was so heavy. Yeah. Oh, there. Right. They think they've located the hive. Yep, ah. there it is. Look at them come. Look at this, it's off. Wow. wow. Look at this. They're off the chain. This is completely cuckoo. This is one of the worst I've seen. Yeah, this is pretty bad. This is one of the worst I've seen. This is unbelievable. All right, you want me to get a bucket, boss? Yeah, let's get a bucket and a... Uh, amazing how calm I can remain. Let's get a bucket and a uh, putty knife. OK. And bring the smoker over, too, so I can kind of calm these little sons of guns down a little bit. This is the beehive. Reed normally tries to save the honey, but these bees need to be calmed down first. Come on out, let's party. For a brief moment, his nose touches his screen. Oh! Damn it. Right on the nose. They want you dead, period. They do not stop. Once they've driven you away, that's not enough. They want blood. They want blood and they get it. Damn it, that hurts. Right on the end of the nose is one of the worst spots you can get it, and I got it good. You little monsters. Oh, God, make my eyes water. That's one of the worst spots you can... And now, of course, they're attacking that spot because of the venom. God bless it. Oh, that hurts. Right on the end of the damn nose. Risky. You all right, boss? Have I still got a stinger in my nose? Right in the end? No, sir. <sighs> Thank you. All right, you old bastard, you're done for. That's it, it's over. Right. History. Ugh, had enough. Let's get him. Boy, that's a way to piss me off. Sorry, I smoked the hell out of him. Using smoke, Jim convinces the bees that their hive is on fire. Instinctively, they go back inside to salvage their food. As they gorge on the honey, the bees become lethargic and less aggressive. I think they're too far off the chain, to be honest with you. Yeah, they are. After a few minutes, the throbbing pain of a sting gets worse. And it's bleeding. Yeah. Little bastards. I mean, I'm going to look like Bozo the Clown probably by the end of the day here. Um, it, it really is amazing how much it hurts. Uh, the venom is very similar to rattlesnake venom. And if I get stung right between the eyes and the forehead, both of my eyes swell shut. And it feels literally like a cigarette burn, like a burn, like you're having a, a, a burn on your, wherever they sting you. It takes all your, all your attention, all your attention. You can't even think. This many bees and how insane they are would have killed us. We would have all been dead by now. And so uh, I'm, uh, thank God for the bee suits. <laughs> In my bee suit, I'm Superman. But without it, <laughs> I'm running right next to you. But the bees aren't the only killers Reed and Jim have to deal with. They find a venomous centipede. Look at how big he is. My God, these things are horrible. You know, if you get stung in the abdomen or the head, they'll kill you. They'll bite you, you know? Their venom is really horrible. Their bite is like 100 times worse than a, than a bee sting. They an Africanized bee sting. It's really horrible. They oh, also man. find a deadly black widow spider. It looks like she has three egg sacs. They are just deadly. Reed won't be able to save the honey. The bees are too wild. Because he doesn't like to use poison, Reed uses soapy water to drown the bees, which kills them instantly. All right, you nasty bees. Black Widow, everybody's going down. We don't know how many stings it takes to kill a person. There are people, one sting kills them. Some people, 10. Some people, uh, 40. Uh, then there's uh, the guy who took 3,700 stings and lived. Oh, dear. So really bad, huh? Oh. Nuclear. Really? I wouldn't go back there for about a week. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, we killed almost all of them. There's still a few flying around. Yeah, right yeah there's one right there. God, don't let them in. I know. Oh, darn them. They're just something else, I'll tell you right now. The last, they were meaner. The last time I went out, and I'm standing there, and I heard one buzzing, and it got in my hair, and I'm going like this, and I ran in the house, and I was sitting there, and I'm going, 
Something's in my hair. I finally went and got a comb, and I had Combed one. It out. Yeah, it was yeah. dead. But oh, really? You oh, did, you I whacked did. it. <laughs> I didn't get stung, but I whacked Ouch. it. You're seeing the tip of the iceberg, all right? Do not go near them because an average hive has 40 to 60,000 bees in it. The next job is in the middle of a residential area where the bees are frightening people in neighboring homes. Let's go take a peek at it and see how bad, what the situation is. Okay. Killer bees have a large attack range of several hundred yards. The owners of the house Reed has been called to are away, so it's up to him to investigate the problem on his own. You know what we're gonna have to do? Huh. Smoke them. Oh, they're mean already. Let's go get the smoker. The problem is obvious. Reed notices the gap between the brick wall and the roof eaves. This is the door to the beehive, so he needs to seal the bee's entrance. That neighbor is way too close. Ouch! Damn it, right on the nose again. Reed gets stung again through his net. I hate these little bastards. Maybe I can scrape it out. He pulls the bee stinger out. <sighs> The Africanized bee was nicknamed a killer bee because of their tendency to defend the hive to the nth degree. They will attack with such ferocity and not just wound <clears throat> or drive away intruders, they will kill them and then keep stinging the corpse, whether it's a dog, a horse, or a person. Well, what we've done is entombed the bees inside of the wall. Because this is a, st a brick wall, they're living in the bricks and uh, there's no way to remove them without turning the house down, and of course, people don't want to do that. So we seal them in, and they die in the wall. Honey lasts forever. They found honey in the tombs of Tutankhamun in Egypt, and so it lasts forever. It's not going to go bad. It's not going to smell. Uh, the bees will die. They're just little insects. They'll dry out, no biggie. Thinking their job is almost over, Jim sets up a bee trap, using a pheromone to attract and capture the remaining bees but the bees coming back wow. from the field keep accumulating. Oh my God, we're gonna have to get bigger traps. About 10 times this size. The trap Jim placed is already full. Realizing the entrance to their hive is blocked, the angry bees continue to attack Reed and Jim. Reed sprays liquid soap on the bees, which covers their pores with a film that suffocates them immediately. Yeah, they're insane. Let's kind of keep an eye out for pedestrians. In a residential area like this, it's really bad. I mean, they bomb waiting to go off. Hey, these bees could have killed somebody. But the traps are working well. All right, look at them attack. Oh, look at that. I got one bee that stung my glove. Her stinger is out, and she is literally disemboweling herself as she's trying to. There she goes. She'll go die. The worker bee stings his victim with his behind. The stinger has barb hooks that allow it to anchor inside the victim's flesh. The bee then pumps the venom from its poison gland. After stinging, the bee is held back by its barb hooks. Struggling to release itself, part of the bee's abdomen gets pulled out. When a bee stings you, it's a kamikaze mission. She loses her life. Left behind are the stinger and the muscles controlling the venom gland. These muscles continue to work autonomously to pump venom into the skin. An alarm pheromone is also released to mark the victim so that more bees can come and attack. That pheromone travels very quickly through the air, and so all of the be attack bees then have a target. It's literally the target zone, because somebody's planted a stinger, and boy, let's drive this guy off or kill him. These bees are really insane. All the bees this year have been completely insane, and they are wanting to kill me right now, even though we've trapped them and soaked them, and they're not getting out, so I don't know so we're going to get out Mr. Soapy, the uh, compressor, and just soap these guys down completely. This is horrible. I have had instances where when, when the bees are this insane that we've had to get the fire department out and police department in Cordonapa, four to six block radius, uh, go door to door and tell people to stay in their homes until we can get this under control. These bees are still attacking even after being what would normally be defeated, but I can see them, they're all over the neighbor's houses and just flying all over the place, it's not good. But of course, we've knocked their numbers down dramatically from what they were initially. While most jobs only take about 30 minutes, Reed and Jim have been on this job for over three hours. They have to make sure the area is safe before they leave. We will take care of it, we will defeat them, it just is, uh, 
It's being a little bit of a, a trial here. Oh God, we filled up two traps with bees so far, and that's just uh, ridiculous. In the end, it takes three bee traps to complete the job. Well, finally, we defeated them. There comes a point where they're actually defeated. They know that they have lost, and the remaining bees will not attack. Uh, they will bunch up together, usually in a corner or something, and just talk about, you know, oh, that was the worst day we ever had. Well, I'm very relieved right now that we have a fellow named Jim that is uh, Reed's assistant, and we've been uh, training him for about three weeks, and he's working out really wonderfully so far. It's hard to find someone because you have to be a little bit crazy. You have to be fearless. The first job, it was it was incredible. They were attacking me, like I mean, like it was hail, and and I and I looked at Reed and I said, I think I'm going to run. And he said, just calm down, keep your heart rate down. The bees apparently feel the fear in a person. And there was, uh, the venom was just, it was off the chain. And I was very scared. And I looked over at him, and he was standing in his bee suit like this with these tens of thousands of bees bouncing off him. And he just said, boss, is this how it's supposed to be? <laughs> and I kind of chuckled and said, yep, that's it. <laughs> so we went back to work. And I got stung about 20 times, 18 times, because um, the suit was um, sticking to my skin. He didn't freak out. He felt like it, but he didn't. Those people who tell you not to take chances are missing out on what life is all about. And that is risk, and that is going out there and um, experiencing different things. And um, I love adventure, and I love I love danger, and this job is perfect for me. Reed's next job is at a tall patrol tower on the Arizona-Mexico border. We're only six miles from the border here, so we get a lot of uh, traffic. Reed will be escorted to the site by the Border Patrol agents. Hi, I'm Reed. Hi, Danny Robertson. Good to meet you, Danny. Good to meet you. We'll go down and take care of them bees. OK. You want right. to get up there with me? <laughs> and I forgot my walkie-talkies, but I think we might have some around. But you know, I can always yell uh, at it. From mine, I got two. Oh, good. OK. He meets Chewy, the crane operator. Very good. Well, let's head on down and get her doing. OK. There are often dangerous drug smugglers or illegal aliens trying to cross the border. This is an 80-footer, right? My partner decided to climb that day, and he got up there. James? Yeah, he's been stung a few times. He oh, uh, he got nervous. He come down pretty quick. <laughs> uh, yeah, I bet you he did. It's a beehive waiting to happen, Bill. I mean, I've been, you know what? They, I've, they, I've done like 10 of these When they put towers. this up, they didn't think about bees. Of course, nobody does. OK, Chewie, I think we're ready to go up. Working 80 feet above the ground, they'll have little room to maneuver. If one of their protective suits is compromised, they'll have nowhere to run and hide. OK, you're all zippered in good? Yes, sir. The bees are starting to attack. You guys might want to get in. These bees yeah, are bad. Yeah. He got stung. Randy's getting stung. Even Chewy, the crane operator, has already been stung. We have Benadryl and, and an a epinephrine pin, so if you start feeling weird, just let us know. Okay. Oh, look at the views. There's old Mexico right there. Wow. Oh, these are ridiculous. My lord. I cannot believe how many stingers I have in my hand. It's starting to rain. This tower could be a lightning rod. I just hope we don't get soaked, because our suits will stick to our uh, Oh, and then we'll skin. get what? Stung? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gee, can you imagine climbing up that ladder, Jim, and being oh. stuck up there with them damn things? Reed is unable to use smoke up here to calm the bees, because it's too windy. We have thousands of stingers in here. This has got to be a big hive, just from the amount of protection that they're putting out, you know? Yeah. we got about another 15 feet to go, Chewy. Yeah. I just got to be careful here. i got to use one hand only so I can keep this mask off my face, because they're stinging me. I got stung here a couple of times already. Roger that. If Chewy reacts badly to his stings, the guys could get stuck up there. Yes. These bees are insane. Yep. Okay, how much more do I need to go? About another five feet straight up, and then we'll get a little closer to the pole, Chewy. Yeah, <laughs> four. Look at these guys. Oh, they're just all completely cooked now. Oh, this is insane. Oh, my lord. Could you give me, ouch, damn it, I got stung in the shoulder. Bastard. Just enough to piss me off. Uh, could you give me an expanding foam? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. These guys 
guys are just insane. Probably have a, the whole damn hive out already. This bee entrance is too large to fill with his expanding foam, so Reed packs the hole with a screen. This also keeps the birds from poking holes in it. I'm gonna make a little screen sandwich here, or should I call it a scream sandwich? <laughs> with the bees now sealed inside the tower pole, Chewie brings them back to the ground. Boy, they're still attacking Chewie pretty good. I cannot believe all these stingers in my hand. Look at that. There's just hundreds and hundreds of them. Hey, Chewie. Aha. Uh -huh. Nothing but fun, huh? Lots of fun. Yes, sir. Lots of fun. How many times do you get stung? Three times. Three times in the face? Yeah, the face and also on my ear here. Yeah. Oh, darn it. We have some sting stuff that we'll put on it. Okay. It'll help. It will help. That's the eye needed because... These things can kill you, can't oh, they? Oh, yeah. They're killers, man. But killer bees don't respect borders. It all started in faraway Brazil. Africanized bees were actually created. There was an experiment that went wrong. In 1956, at the request of the Brazilian government, a Dr. Warwick Kerr went to Africa to bring back 36 pure African queen bees because European bees were not good producers in jungle conditions and very sickly. So he crossbred these two types of bees. The result was a more productive but more aggressive bee. Unfortunately, they escaped into the wild. These killer bees soon colonized Brazil and the other surrounding countries. By 1980, the entire South American continent was saturated with killer bees. Five years later, the bees moved into Mexico, and by 1990, they had arrived in the U.S. Today, killer bees are prominent in 10 states in the southern U.S. and are moving northward. They have been found in um, Wisconsin. They've been uh, killed a beekeeper in Connecticut. They've been found up in Seattle. So they've gone up the coast because it's more temperate. But uh, I, I believe that probably about half the states do have some Africanization at this point. Reed has received an emergency call. He needs to go to an abandoned house full of bees which are creating havoc with the neighbors. Ephraim, I'm Reed. Hi, Reed. Nice hey, to meet bud. you. Uh, I guess that they're in that house since it's an abandoned house. Yes, sir. Where are they located? They're on the southwest window, the farthest to the back. Oh, so they're right by your backyard. Oh, good yeah, lord. Right. I, your pets, you got? I got my dog over here tied up, so she should be OK. She I should be OK. Her. If need be, can you take her in? Yes, sir. Have you been stung at all? Yes, sir, I have. God. Me, my brother, and my uh, brother-in-law were in the backyard. and Just they went cuckoo on you, huh? So we had to go in the house. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. I'm not getting any closer without my suit on. I'll bet you some rattlesnakes in there, too, huh? Yeah. I would recommend you watch out through your window. Yeah, that's what <laughs> we're going to do. I'll be inside watching. Okay, buddy. These kids getting home from school are at risk. They don't realize that killer bees are about to be unleashed. Of course, Reed won't start till he makes sure they're gone. Boy, look at this jungle. This is ridiculous. One major thing I'm looking for, of course, is snakes. This is like Snakeville. But we'll hear them rattle. Unless they're a Mojave, then they'll just probably strike. Watch these electrical wires. I don't know if they're hot or not, so stay away from them. All right, no snakes. We're good to go. Oh, my lord. All right, there they are. All right, we're going to need smoke. Because of the proximity to neighbors and how many people live in this neighborhood, we're going to smoke them and really try to keep them from going completely insane on us. That's right. It's a big old emergency, guys. Mm -hmm. Well, they're mean anyway. Darn them. I was afraid of that. Ironically, though these bees can kill him, Reed still loves them. <laughs> Hi, guys. How's them bees, huh? Reed gets stung again. That's right, guys. Worry about the smoke, not me. This is too dangerous work. Whoa! Looks like we got the whole fam family here, and that is spectacular. That's right, guys. Your time has come. This beehive has between 40 and 60,000 bees. This is a worker bee being born. There's one there. There's another one there. And they are, she'll be popping out here in a little bit. That is a bee being born right there. She's chewing away the wax covering on her cell 
there's a bee that was just born. Yeah, now they're talking. She's just fresh out and she's talking with the neighbors, with the other bees. Yeah, yeah, you're part of this hive, yeah. Let me help clean your wings. Yeah, see there? Welcome to the world, little girl. They're born fully developed. They're born adults. Come here and look at this, Jim. Oh, her, her head's almost out. Look at that. Oh, boy, there's her eyes. Oh, my gosh. That is amazing. Here she comes to save the day. Bees are very neat creatures. They're clean, clean, clean. They're all Virgos. Hi, girls. What's up? Is it a party? Not exactly, huh? Beautiful comb. Honeycomb, what you mean, man? All right, here we go. Got it? Oh, that's a beauty right this there. This is the rarest honey in the world, wild Africanized honeycomb. Honey is fascinating stuff. It's a magical substance. It has all the uh, nutritional things that uh, are lacking in vitamin pills sometimes. With the Honey Reed Collects, he creates award-winning honey butters and honey mustards. The wild Africanized honey around here is absolutely delicious. Reed and his wife, Fabrian, have even opened up their own honey store in Bisbee. Honeybees are very important to our, not only our economy, but our actual food source. About 40% of what we eat is because bees have pollinated something. I'm gonna shoo you off of here. Ooh, I'll get you. They're off the chain now. Yeah. Reed and Jim have to work fast. The neighbor's dog is tied up on the other side of the house and could get stung. Boy, boy, just today we're getting hundreds of pounds of honey. This is great. Try to brush a few bees off if you can. Oh, yeah. Oh, for a chain, you guys. Whoa, a... Jim gets stung. Right Ooh, they're pissed now. Ooh, I can smell the venom. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're, Woo. they're pelting me like hail. Yep, hail, yes. <laughs> I got it right through the dang boat. Though he loves his bees, the admiration is not mutual. These mean hives like this are just kind of a pain. Ow, you little... He's already been stung eight times on this job alone. You know, these bees are so mean, I think we're just gonna hose them down. This is ridiculous. When I do a killer bee removal, a big difference between myself and exterminators is I do not use any poison. Soapy water kills bees and does it very rapidly. But the honey then is fine. We do our best to save the honey. Successful once again. That's the thing about doing this work. You can't not be successful. You have to be successful every time. It's gotta be 100% or or you failed and someone will die. OK, from do not open the door, obviously, they're still bouncing off of me. Um, you saw that. I mean, that was just oh, yeah, off the chain, dude. Uh, really they, something. I yeah, appreciate your help very much. Really All right. Yeah, no problem. You made this, uh, this little place here a little bit safer. Driving with a bee suit on is dangerous, but necessary when killer bees get into the truck. We may as well roll down the windows and get rid of these little monsters, huh? There they go. Go on, girls. Get out of here so we can take our nets off anyway. Go on, get out of here. These guys were aggressive. Get and shoot. So after a busy day with killer bees, the boys want to seek out more thrills and head off to the local fair. I can smell them farm animals already. Reed's the, the coolest boss I've ever had. We'll go out and we'll work really hard. We'll do three or four or five jobs a day. But every day after work, we relax and enjoy life. And that's what it's all about. This morning, Reed has an urgent job in the busy town of Tombstone. Well, I really wish you'd come because um, mm -hmm. it's right at the, at the Chamber of Commerce yeah. in the old bank building. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, I'm sure we're going to have to block off the street or have the marshal out because it's a tourist town. Yeah. There'll be a lot of people around. So can you come on that mm -hmm. one? OK, great. I did request that they, uh, uh, the marshal go over and put more tape up. That's fine. Yeah, just, just to make sure that no looky-loos, nobody gets stung, people get in the flight path, whatever. OK, buddy. And I'll uh, I'll be up there ASAP. Uh, we'll see you soon. OK, babe. OK. Bye -bye. Later. 
All right, guys, well, let's go. We got uh, killer bees in Tombstone, and we got to go up and take care of this right now. The Tombstone Chamber of Commerce is downtown. There are people everywhere who could be attacked if the killer bees get out of control. I don't know, if we get too many looky-loos, I'm gonna wanna have a marshal down here to keep them away. I just I just don't want these bees to go cuckoo and sting somebody. Okay, thanks. Uh, what we'll do... Remember, the attack radius of killer bees is several hundred yards. But they can spread even further. They just moved in, no you can just you know, keep the looky-loos away. Okay, cool, I can appreciate it. And we'll relight that, I want a lot of smoke with this because we're in a residential area and it could be... You never know when a 400 tourists are gonna come by. Hey, Smokey! Yeah, we'll let her let it burn. Woo, that's hot, huh? Whee, yeah, there goes the hair. I think we're gonna have to seal up, you know, a lot. Bees are very um, landmark oriented. And so when they first move into a place, you can see them all along the link looking around because it all looks the same to them. But you can see them looking all over. It's like, where's, where's home? The only reason I still go on bee removal jobs is I have been blessed by not being stung yet. And I can't say that, uh, <laughs> I think it's a miracle. Hopefully we can prevent a disaster. We use steel wool and fill them with, with the expanding foam and then use that to seal up the entrance because nothing can poke through it. Birds, nothing. Oh boy, there are holes everywhere here. A lot of holes up here. Of course, I got nice bare wires here. <laughs> Hope that's not hot. Okay, still will. Cute. Be careful, you guys. I think we have more than one hive here. In fact, I'm sure of it. Really don't want them to be aggressive here in Tombstone. This is not good. <laughs> I got into a hive room about a year ago out here, and uh, they eat the heck out of me. I walked out of them, and uh, the only thing that saved me was all this hair. Their job is done, and the town is safe again. We're just doing the final touches on it now. There were two hives up there, and for now, we're gonna wrap up the sealant and put up the bee trap. And at this point, they're not, they're not gonna be aggressive. Okay. Reed first became interested in bees in the late 80s, when a friend who was working as a bee inspector at the Arizona Department of Agriculture supplied him with some European bees to start beekeeping. Fine meal. Honey mustard deluxe. Mm. Yeah, everything's got honey mustard in it. Well, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't even be into bees. Don't blame me. You're the one that called me. I'm blaming you. You're the one no, that called me up and said, I got a bag of bees for you. <laughs> well, <laughs> when the killer bee showed up in Arizona three years later, Catherine had a bad experience. Yeah, we opened this uh, wild hive that was in a stack of tires or something out there oh, by there somebody's house. Yeah. And I didn't uh, zip my zipper, and about 30 <laughs> bees went up really aggressively inside my um, net, and I didn't know whether to take it off or I keep know. it on. I know, what do you do? It's I so know. confusing. So I leaped in the back of the pickup, and my partner drove down the road, bumpy dirt road, <laughs> as fast as the bees would fly off me, and then... Uh, they followed us. So back. you got 30 stings just in the head. I did. I had a oh. pumpkin head. It was oh, like... <laughs> Lord, Kathy. Oh. In 1998, Bisbee was the scene of the largest killer bee attack in the world. The bees attacked and stung 17 people, sending eight to the hospital. It all started at this downtown building on Brewery Gulch Street, when its owner, inexperienced with killer bees, sprayed raid in the walls. The bees started coming out, and so he just went back home. He didn't even get stung. But then he started hearing the screams, because, of course, the bees, when they perceive a threat, will come out their front door. The bees immediately left the building and started attacking civilians. The bees' first victim was Deborah Strait, who was driving her car with the window slightly open when a few bees entered her vehicle. So I opened the door so they could find their way out, and a whole lot of them came in, and I decided, you want the car? Take the car. So I got out of the car, and then hundreds descended on me. I was batting them away from my head and off my face, and then I realized that they were concentrating on my head. So I took my shirt off to cover my head, 
and then I realized what was happening. This was a killer bee attack, and if I got enough of these, I would die. The first to respond to the scene was police officer David Gonzalez. I got right to this point where I'm standing now, and I saw this lady screaming, running down, screaming. I was screaming, not out of fear so much, but I wanted some help, and I wanted it right now. And as soon as I opened my, my car door, I got totally covered in bees. He immediately ran up the hill to safety to his father's house. He pretty much started swatting me with his fly swatter. With over 100 stings on his head and down his throat, he was rushed to the hospital. So I quit calling for help. And I walked to a friend's house right up the street and used her garden hose to keep them off of my face while she called the police. Josie Mincher was the nurse treating the victims. When I saw Debbie, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. She had bites, hundreds, thousands of them, all over her face, her body, everywhere. And that's just what I could see. It looked like a cheap horror movie with little wax balls all over her face. I spent a half an hour just throwing up and throwing up and throwing up. And even before the pain set in, my legs would do this. We'd go into spasms. So I had a lot of venom. There were stingers everywhere, in her ears, her nose, her mouth. The killer bees soon spread from Brewery Gulch Street to the neighboring streets, attacking anyone in sight. The first medic from the fire department to arrive was Mel Ray. As soon as I got out of my rig to go around to get my gear on, uh, I just got swarmed, and I had about 200 bees land on my head and my neck, and I ended up getting stung almost 200 times. When I walked up, there was only one fireman standing here hosing down the bees, and these bees were stinging birds flying overhead. They were stinging telephone poles, tires. Uh, it was complete mayhem, and it looked like a war scene, actually, with what I'd imagine a war scene to be, with cars parked, with doors open, running, lights on, police lights on. There were people running around naked up the street, taking their clothes off, just throwing them off every direction. For three hours, the frightened firefighters sprayed the bees, the building, and Reed as he worked under pressure to seal off the bees. Deborah survived over 500 stings thanks to immediate medical care. Well, I'm glad you're all right. Do you I'm have any it. scars? Mentally, oh. that's, that's all. Nothing, you know, nothing. I mean, it didn't affect me. I just, it's something that you just, something you'll never forget. It's something you'll never forget. I've never seen anything like it again. It's probably once in a lifetime thing, and I hope it never happens again. Reed is off to a horse ranch that has 37 horses. Because there are numerous hives on the site, he brings his wife, Fabrian, along to help. They're not at all nice. Yeah. I'll address that today for you. Yeah. And, uh, I'll get rid of them once and for all. Yeah. You lived out here long? Uh, 18 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been down in Bisbee about 20 months. Wow. Yeah. The horses are uneasy. Horses got stung down there? Yeah, down there they did, yeah. Yeah, boy, oh boy, oh boy. And the horse fly spray, that's what tracks them. You know, that's happened before. That's happened before. In fact, you know the Pursleys down there? Yeah. Uh, Jimmy and Norma? Right. They, uh, they lost a horse, you know, a few years ago because they sprayed that fly stuff on them and then put them out in the lawn to mow the right. lawn, two horses. And these bees came out of something like this and just, she, Norma said you couldn't even see the, the horses. It was like clouds. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Not, not good. Killed one on the spot. Wow. Should have killed the other one. Yeah. Chased the dog off, sent Jimmy to the hospital, stung up Norma. Oh, these said, well, you know, these things are really something else. The horse rancher brings his dog to safety. In the last few months, Chad's been stung about 20 times in the head. They've got a lot of hives on this ranch. Let's get rid of these bees. All right. I mean, we've got 37 horses around here, plus dogs and, you know. Ah. Luckily, the first hive turns out to be a small one. That's great. I've got to see. Must wait. Under this tire, oh. Reed makes a fantastic discovery. Check this out. There's a skull. Looks like there's another one. These creatures tried to get in to steal honey. The bees killed them, and so if they can't move something out of the hive, they mummify it, literally. Another little skull, totally mummified. Oh, that is so cool. Probably rats, that's what they are. Trying to get honey, of course. Oh, wow. 
Looks like they killed a bull, too. Didn't mummify it very well. <laughs> the horses aren't safe yet. They can smell the danger in the air. Now it's time for the big hive in the shop. At night, when you go in there, the whole building just roars. You can hear them. You know, I mean, they're very busy. <laughs> it sounds like they've been there a while also. Well, they've been there about a year. Uh-huh. Oh, come on, no, guys. No. Come here, guys. Everybody go. This time, Thanks. the dogs are kept in the house. I'll get bud. Thank you. Fabrian's primary role on these jobs is to keep the bees calm by smoking them. Oh, beautiful. Wow. All right, um... All right, excuse me, honey. We're gonna move this this way. We're gonna try oh, and get screw it down. Get it screwed down down below. All right, well, let's break her. Bring, it all again. Bring her down. Should break pretty clean right there. <laughs> oh, my word. Now I'm starting to attack. Oh, hurry on into the house. Hurry on into the house. Look at all that beautiful comb. I am impressed. My God, there must be hundreds of pounds of comb here. On this job, Reed is able to save a lot of honey. These are all empty because they were ready for use, for storage. It's kind of like they build all their cans. And then uh, when they need to, they can actually fill them up with honey or babies or whatever, and then slap the lids on. <clears throat> turns into work, man. I don't need to go to the gym, you know. That is a heavy one. This is a big old hive. I mean, there's like 150,000 bees in here. Look at that. Beautiful. Reed is happy. The bees were calm enough for him to collect a massive amount of honeycomb. I would say don't be doing anything until sunset today. Oh, OK. A successful job. The ranchers and the horses are safe. I personally have had thousands of stings over the 20 years I've been doing this. Apparently, as the more you get stung, the less resistant you are to the bee venom. So therefore, it can come a day when one sting and you could die. You see it coming and you see it go. When time is up, then you will know that black is white. My wife, my friends, they definitely worry about me. They'll call me and say, are you OK? What'd you do today? I think the overheating is our primary concern. I suffered what? A, a heart attack. And it had been a very, very busy bee season. Uh, I had been in the suit every day. Reed is a very passionate person, and I believe he's always taken risks. Um, you just can't change someone's personality. Walking on the water, walking on the water, walking on the water, walking on the water. Reed gets a call to get rid of a swarm of bees in a backyard. One of your dogs got stung, is that correct? Mm hmm But is it all right? Yep. OK. If they get stung too much, uh, you can give them Benadryl, same thing that we would take okay. as humans. Yeah, look at those things right over here, a swarm of bees. We're going to need a ladder okay. and a bucket. We don't need to smoke them because they're not in that m mode. There's only about two or three in the house okay. total. OK, and they'll go to the windows. So, yeah. yeah. All right. You go ahead and get your puppy around front, okay. and then we'll, uh, we'll attack these guys, OK? OK. Here we have um, a swarm of bees, which is nature's way of propagating the area with bees. You have a hive, an established hive. And uh, certain times of the year, 10, 20, 30 percent of the bees will take off with the old queen that's already mated and go form a ball of bees in a tree to rest and, and shop for a new home. They're actually looking for a new place to live. You know, something that size will have seven to 10,000 bees in it. Amazing, isn't it? We don't need the smoker for this. Come to daddy. Here we go. Good girls. Reed drops the whole swarm into a bucket. And this is the most docile state for bees. Although I, I still wear a suit. I used to be able to do this without a suit on with the African eyes, but not anymore. These bees we're going to release into the wild. They're beneficial, of course, to nature, and we don't want to hurt them. And it's OK if they live out in the wild. They just, you don't want them under your house. 
golfers on this course have been attacked by killer bees. There's a hive here in a dead oak tree. It's lying in tall, rattlesnake-infested grass. Yeah. Well, we heard a rattlesnake, so it, it, you know, crossing tap the fence, you're yeah. going to tap everything. Tap everything, pretty good. You know, when it comes time to run, you'll have a pretty <laughs> good chomp right over that. Right. The tree is too old to remove, so Reed blocks off the bees' entrances to their hive. They are coming out right there. Not anymore, they're not. A lot of people, under the same amount of stress that he has on the job, would completely freak out. The next job is a kid's treehouse that's practically falling down. Get buzzed. Priscilla, stay in the house. <laughs> Thank you. Here they come. Reed finds the entrance to one of the hives. The guard bees are getting ready to attack, so he gets the smoker ready. The cherry picker doesn't work. That means these guys will have to go up there on a the ladder, and the treehouse is very unstable. Climbing ladders with bee suits on is a clumsy and dangerous task. Can't be afraid of anything doing this job, that's for sure. We could have three hives here. Now we're gonna put the ladder up against the roof so that we can actually get a handle on the wood and pull the uh, wood off and expose the hive. At the same time, Huge. I'd really like to have someone in the room, Jim, smoking the bees. Yeah. At the same time that we pull that thing off. See it? Hold on, hold on. Wow! Oh, my lord. Wow. But the games that. began. Dude. Maybe this part we can get from the inside. The smoke worked well on these bees to calm them down. If there was a child up here, say with her friends, and they accidentally poked a hole in a wall, or if they just simply bumped against the wall, and the bees started coming and attacking them through the window, they would have died, they would have had to crawl down the stairs somehow, and it's very unnerving when you're attacked. All right, honey and brood and everything, look at that. Okay, the next step here, since we removed the comb, is to save as many bees as possible and hope we get the queen. We're gonna just take handfuls of bees now. All right, come on, girls, that's right, good girls. Because the bees are now docile, he can gather handfuls and will be able to release them into the wild for fruit pollination. Since killer bees are the only honeybees left in Arizona, they are necessary for farming. Now we have another hive over here. Zwiener bees. They're stinging. Oh boy, here they come. Look at them pour out of there. You got another bucket? This one's a bad one. The bees are attacking. These are bad. The smoker bad, bad didn't bees. work as well on this hive. Stop it, you guys. Ow, stop it. Okay, it was something small. Oh, my gosh. Can't let me come out. It turns out this other hive is much bigger than they expected. Wow. You guys have been here for years. They had to be here for years. I'm surprised no one died. Oh, damn it. Bastards. A total of eight feet of comb. I cannot believe this. I haven't seen this kind of comb for a long time. Wow, this is a huge hive. There's got to be 100,000 or more bees in here. Damn it, I got stung on the little finger right through the glove. Wash the bees. These people are good to go. They can tear that thing down and, and be safe. You see, they're dead already. Very humane way to do it, because they die immediately. That's a wrap. We did it. Big one. Good man. As the bees move north and into the more populated areas of the United States, People are going to need to be educated about what not to do and what to do with these bees. If you get attacked, immediately cover your head and head for cover. That's the only advice I can really give about it. Run as fast as you can, straight line, none of the zigzag stuff. After 20 years of dangerous work, Reed still loves it. I think I like taking risks because uh, life is short and that's where the flavor comes from, you know?